We are in the small shoemaker's workshop in the bazaar in the town of Pitch in western Kosovo. The shop could be eight to nine square meters large. Two of the walls consist wholly of windows which look at the bazaar alley. The two other window walls make up the separation to similar small shops and workshops. There's a smell of leather, grated wood, glue, everywhere on nails and shelves hang and stand, all kinds of things, with in some cases the frailest of connection to shoes. Shoelaces in meters and of dozens of kinds, leather belts of diverse whiteness, length and colors, shoe creams and brushes, second-hand shoes for sale or being in for repair. With brief intervals, new customers enter and ask about or for something, a belt, a certain kind of buckle, and they always find what they're looking for, since the small workshop is simply packed. In between customers, the young shoemaker works at his bench, which doubles as the shop desk, fastening shoes to his bench before starting work on them, knocking nails into soles or sewing a few stitches. A cozy place, but more than that, it's relaxing to enter Dada's workshop. <laughs> A za mene nije, nije to razlika jer Srbin istera ga ja, ne, ja ga primim dobro, što da ne? Jer on dođe da radi, gdje je Srbin ili Albanac, jer eto ko ti, ne, mene nije to, za mene isto. Svaka nacija za mene isto. A neko to ne voli. In large cities with crowds and heavy traffic, it's often a huge relief to step inside a quiet shop, closing the door behind you. Suddenly, one regains the ability to think a sensible thought. Exactly like that it is with Dada's workshop. Even though the bazaar in pitch is a quiet place and almost completely without cars. In pitch, it's not exhausting to walk around because of too much traffic or too many people, but it can take its toll anyway if you don't speak Albanian. More precisely, it turns out to be a problem that I speak some Serbian, which I in many cases have to use as few speak English. It's a problem, though, Many Albanians of over around the age of 30 do speak Serbo-Croatian as the language was called when they learned it in school, in Yugoslav times. Today, many people do not wish to hear that language. For example, I'm thrown out of a cafe because I, however brokenly, speak Serbian. And the town's minority of Muslims with cultural ties to Bosnia, the so-called Bosniaks, no longer feel at home in their own town and are afraid to speak their mother tongue. At least that's what some of them tell me. Such suspicion and sometimes hate to people that you've never seen before have their root in history, recent or distant. More recently, it's about the 98-99 to 99 Kosovo war, when many were killed, the large majority of whom, but certainly not all, Albanians, and after which all Serbs were forced to leave. But whatever the reason, when you speak Serbian, you get a claustrophobic sense of being surrounded by bad feelings. That's why it's a liberation to step into Dada's shoemaker's workshop. Dada gets curious when hearing that I live in Serbia and immediately asks, how do people live in Serbia these days? 
A couple of hours earlier, a group of elderly men in one of the town's bar bar saloons also asked about the situation in Serbia. But this was in a completely other way and context. Reading the bad news from Serbia in the daily paper, they chuckled gleefully, asking, are things really that bad up there? Obviously, they were hoping for a confirming answer. Not so with Dada. He asks with genuine interest whether there are shoemakers like him in the Serbian town where I live. He asks, he explains, because he, very unusually, was there a couple of years ago as a tourist. And back then, he didn't see any shoemakers. And so, we talk about old crafts, their advantages and the sad and bad things about their disappearance in a time with globalization and with the transition from a socialist to a capitalist system. Dana would rather run his shoemaker's shop than being the president. He adores his craft. So he tells me, with the satisfaction which in this region is less frequent than ethnic tolerance. There ought to be not less but many more of that kind of shoemakers, and not just in pitch.